But God said there's a shift in the spirit. There's a real shift taking place right now. And things are shifting and shifting and shifting. You know, in Hebrews it says, Harden not your hearts when you hear the voice of God. Harden not your hearts as the children of Israel did. And they missed their time of visitation. There is a time of visitation right now. And you can miss it. You can miss it. Just like when Jesus rode in in the triumphal parade. He rode right past the church because they didn't even want him. And he rode into the street. And then he went into the church. You know, Isaiah 56, 7 says, My house shall be called the house of prayer. And a thousand years later, Jesus stands up in the temple and proclaims this. And when he's in the street, the, the, the religious leaders came out of the church, their temple. And they came out there in the, the first... 15 says they were indignant. They were upset. Somebody's messing up their church service. Somebody's messing up their prayer ministry. What's going on out here? And they said, I don't know, ask that guy in the donkey. He's in charge of it. <laughs> they missed their time of visitation. You get what I'm saying? January, God woke me up and he said, Will you cry for me for America? My God, my God, listen to me. He said, cry for me in America like the 50 students in Argentina did. I don't know how many heard about the Argentina revival. But the Argentina revival, 50 students prayed for 50 days. They began a prayer meeting. They were carrying the pain of that nation. They were carrying the hurt. They were carrying the, 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 the travail of that nation. They were vicariously taking it on themselves. And for 50 days they prayed. The glory of God came down so hard that they had to close the school. Listen to this, people. They were in tears. When, when you read Lamentations, let your tears run day and night. This is what happened to them. They were wailing, travailing. They're standing in puddles of tears for their nation. 6,000 believers in the nation at that time. And then 50 days later, God said, the principality is down over the region praying no more. 180,000 people were showing up in stadiums. 180,000 were showing up in stadiums. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? These wells have been dug in America. The William Seymour's. We go back. We go back. There was wells dug. There's open heavens. Well, God about to redig those wells and pour that spirit back out again. But it's going to take you. It's going to take you in that place of prayer to do this. Prayerlessness is a silence of dissent. It's your silence of dissent to the enemy. You give him a right to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Unless you pray. Yeah. Things are going to take a natural course of action unless you pray. Yes. There's two courses of action. There's God's course of action and there's Satan's will. Yeah. And Satan's been imposing his will too long. Yes. He's been holding our drug addicts and drugs. He's been holding the prostitution and prostitution too long. we got to get him out. Yes. we got to get him out. I saw... Uh, I saw the Lord's hand come down and grab an hourglass, and he flipped it over, and he said, this is the last time. That's it. We're out of time, people. They're dying, going to hell out in our streets. And we've got to get them out. And the only way you're going to do that is a place of prayer. You've got to cry out for America. Joel 3 says this, and I'm going to be labor on this. Shut up. In verse 9, proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war. There's a cry of the Spirit going out, a clarion call like never before in the history of the church. Call the church to that place of prayer. I'm serious, people. This is not just a cliche or something I'm just saying. There's a cry. If you don't hear this cry and you don't answer it, then Jesus shed a lot of blood in vain. I'm trusting on this. And if you don't answer that call, then you go to people with nothing. People don't want conversation, and that's all you're going to have without being in this place of prayer. You're going to walk out here with conversation. And people don't want conversation. They want demonstration. They want demonstration. Jesus was a walking demonstration of who he was. And that comes from that place of prayer. You've got to come out of that place of prayer to have this. Wake up, mighty men. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Let all the men do a war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. Beat your plowshares into swords. 
The farming's over, people. It's war. As, as clear and sound as it sounds. Don't look for God in this. You better know I'm going in. This is time to know God. I'm telling you, in the last days, there's going to be legions, legions of evil released on this earth and it's being done now. You better know Him. You better know Him when you wake up in the morning and your wife's in a car accident. Or you better know Him when you, you wake up and you find your daughter on drugs. You better know Him when something comes against your life. Don't look for Him. You better know Him going in. Beat your pruning, pruning hooks into, into spirits. Let the weak say I'm strong. Come on. If you know him, you know who you are in God. Come on. You're strong in him. Assemble and come up all your nations and gather all around. Cause your money once to go down there. As a spirit of repentance. Let the nations be weak and come up to the valley of Joseph. That, oh, I will sit there and judge all around you. And this is where I'm going. I saw this in the spirit. I saw an angel, Michael the Archangel, come down and sit down right in the middle of the midst of this. I heard the sound of war. I heard the drums beating. I heard them coming from four different directions. And I saw him come down and he had a sickle. And the sickle was written out of the word prayer. That's it. It says, put in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Go down for the wine press is full. The vats are overflow for their wickedness is great. That's it. How do you go get them out of that valley of decision? Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, it says in Proverbs. Hold back those being led to slaughter. Who's being led to slaughter? How about 40 million prophets, evangelists, and teachers that weren't even born yet was created for a time such as this? Right. Come on. you got to speak up for them. How are you going to do that? You've got to do that in the place of prayer. Prayerlessness is a sound with a consent in that the church has been asleep for 2,000 years. When Jesus came, to them, and they were asleep three different times. He said, Peter, 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 can you not pray for me? The spirit is well, but the flesh is not. Who was he talking to? Peter, Petrus, upon this rock I will build my church. Peter represented the church. He's speaking to the church. And 2,000 years later, he's speaking to the church again. Saying, wake up. Wake up. Things are not going to change unless you do things. Your life's not going to change. Nothing's going to change unless you pray. It's going to take that spirit.